Let's take a look at the customer programming software for this new Redivus RA89 dual band ham HT. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how to's on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the CPS for the Redivus RA89 Dual Band Ham HT. As always, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Programming a new HT can be a bit of a pain, especially if you plan on entering a bunch of channels. Multiple button presses on the radio's keypad to program the correct settings and then saving the channels isn't hard, but seems to take forever. The manufacturer's CPSs are pretty standard programs that allow you to enter channels and their related settings from your computer's keyboard instead of the radio's faceplate. They also allow you to set variables in the radio normally found in the radio's menu system. This is a lot faster than programming on the radio faceplate. Where most of these programs disappoint is that most do not allow cutting and pasting more than one cell at a time, and they don't allow importing predefined frequency groups or inputs directly from sources such as repeaterbook.com. The open source CPS Chirp does allow these actions, but it often takes several months before a member of the user group gets around to programming the data structure for new radios. 2023 has seen a bunch of new releases and few have found their way into Chirp program yet. With that in mind, when it comes to new radios, you're stuck with the manufacturer's CPS. If you're new to analog HT programming, here's a look at the RA89 CPS. What it is, how it works, and how you can save time using it to program your new RA89. Let's get started. So let's take a little bit of a dive here into the CPS for the RA89. You can download it from the Redivus site, uh, and this is what it's gonna look like when you get it extracted onto your computer. Now, when it comes in, it's just got a handful of random frequencies dialed in. This is what it looks like when you turn it on for the very first time. Now, to do anything with this, we're gonna to want to uh, do a couple of things, and let's do just a quick tour of the controls before we jump into that. So we've got the typical Windows menu drop down here. We've got File, where it's open and um, Program, where it's Read, Write, and Code. Settings, where you can set the bit rate in the COM port and then Help About. Here is the same thing. It's New, it's Open, Save, Read, Write, and Help About. So those are the, the main controls. Here in the tree area, we can go into our channel display, which is what's showing now. We can go into our VFO and we can uh, see what we've got in the various frequency ranges. The basic radio controls are here. These are handy. They're easier to set than going through the various things in the menu. A couple of things to note is that you can uh, make changes here to what how the screen comes up. So now it comes up with RA89 and Redivus. Here are the pre-programmed or pre-selected uh, side key programs. And when we look at the radio here in just a second, you'll see I've made some changes to that. These three are have to do with tone signaling and DTMF. You're not going to have to worry about that. Frequency range, same thing. Uh, and then radio is the uh, various FM stations that you can program in should you choose if you want to use the radio as an FM broadcast receiver. The first thing we're going to do then is we're going to plug our programming cable into our computer and into the radio. I'm using an FTDI programming cable. Um, the Redivus programming cable is prolific. Baofeng is probably going to work too. That's a CH340 uh, style cable. And so to show what port you're on, you're going to want to start with your device manager. And you can see when I scroll down here to ports, my USB serial port is COM4. I want to remember that number. So I'm done with my device manager now. So I'm going to go up here to settings. I'm going to hit my COM port select. It sees that COM port 1 and COM port 4 are active on this computer. I'm going to select COM port 4. 
and click enter. Again, now I'm going to click uh, read from my radio. So you can see the status bar coming across. It's reading the data that I've already programmed into my radio. We'll use that as a jumping off spot. It's all there. And so you can see now in our channels, I've got a handful of VHF channels, a handful of UHF channels, and these are just kind of local repeaters and a couple of other things that I uh, fairly often use. Now, when I go here, I'm in the channel display, which is what I have now. And then if I want to, I can program in a box instead of in the spreadsheet. And I can also get to that by double clicking these arrows here at the end. And then so here's the information for that channel and then the other things that I can uh, program if I prefer uh, using that instead of the spreadsheet version. So now when I get into my basic radio controls, you can see the changes that I've made. I've got the display to name. I don't remember frequencies and call signs very well. So uh, I name my channels and then uh, I display by name. Squelch 3 usually works for me. Um, I've got the transmit tone off, all these various things. Power save mode is the ratio between uh, when the radio is listening for a signal and for power saving reasons when it's not listening. Uh, the higher the ratio, the more likely it is you're going to miss the first you know, syllable of somebody's transmission. But when it senses a carrier, it's going to start listening. But this allows you to save your battery power. I'm going to listen for 120 seconds. Uh, and here are the rest of these things. My scan type is time operations. So it'll go to where it finds a signal. It'll linger there for a few minutes or for a few seconds, then it'll start scanning again. It gives you time to select it if you want to listen or not. But the other choices are carrier operations and scan. And scan. And over here, uh, we've got the side keys. And I've got them programmed for short key on number one is the flashlight, a long press on number one is FM radio. A short press on number two will change my power setting for that channel and a long press on side key two will engage noise cancellation. There are a number of things you can do and make changes here and so you can put that into a way that uh, makes sense for you. So with those choices made and with all my frequencies typed in, I'm ready to save. Typing in frequencies can get a little tedious. However, you can copy and paste into these squares. If you click in here, you can either type or paste a frequency in. When you click out, it's going to fill in here. These will all fill in and then you can just make changes. And so these are drop down boxes. Uh, you can make changes to, to select the right CTCSS. Most ham repeaters are only encode and don't have decode. But as you can see, there are a couple of them here in the Phoenix area that in fact have both encode and decode. We don't use scramblers in, in ham radio. I've got these power set to five. The step is small. The bandwidth is wide and, and then I'm giving them a name over here. So uh, that's how you program. And so when you've got this the way you want it, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go up here to file and you want to save as. And this is going to come up. As you can see, I've got this in my Microsoft account under a general folder called Chirp Images, even though this isn't Chirp. I've got a folder called RA89. And what I do then is uh, give it a name. And I normally will call it the date. So today is 20, 23, 11, 06. I'm going to call it RA89 so I know for sure that's what it is. And then I'm going to save it. Now with that saved, it's safe. If I screw something up, I can load this and uh, into the CPS first and then write it to the radio. Uh, but now since I've made some changes, I'm going to go up here. I can either go to Program, Write, or I can just hit the right icon. And so the LED on the top is flashing and you can see the progress bar is moving. It's all done. And now I can disconnect the programming cable and the radio is programmed for these channels and for the basic radio settings that you just watched. That's a quick look 
for those of you who are kind of new to CPSs, how you would program your RA89. Okay, so there we are. A quick tutorial on using the RA89 CPS to get you up and running as quickly as possible. Here are a couple of tips based on my experience. First, if you think you'll be adding a variety of frequencies to your radio over time, map out a plan for where the various repeaters, services, and other categories are going to live in your memory bank. It gets really frustrating to search through hundreds of channels looking for something in particular. Group related channels together and leave room for additions to make radio management easier. The CPS doesn't allow for shifting channels up and down to resort after adding something new. Next, be sure to save your data file, often called a code plug, each time you make a change. I name mine with the date and radio model and keep it in a folder I can access online in case I'm away from home. My file names normally start with the year, then the month, then the date, and the model number. I hope you found this video helpful and again, please like the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Join me over here if you miss my review of the Redivus RA89. Thanks for watching and 73.